Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Blue, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing episode 2 of World of Warcraft's Rarest Obtainable Hunter Pets. Uh, so with this episode, I've done a lot more research than I did the first time around. Uh, if anything I say in this video has actually been patched, and I don't know about it, for the love of God, please let me know down in the comments. So all the pets in this video are going to be one of a kind, meaning that there's only one spot that you can obtain them. Some of them are going to be rares with a really long spawn timer. Some of them are going to have a little bit more of a process as far as taming them. You know, you're not just going to be able to walk up and tame them, uh, and, I'll, and I'll get into that. Some of them are actually going to be invisible, and you're going to have to track them. And some of them are actually going to have special features after you tame them. And I'll get into what I mean by that in just a second. Guys, before we get into it, leaving me a like on this video does help me out on the channel, and subscribing will help you to not miss out on any new content. But without further delay, this is episode 2 of World of Warcraft's Rarest Obtainable Hunter Pets. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> uh, the first pet that I'm going to show you, you can actually get it in more than one spot. Um, it's not a completely unique look. Uh, and it's also not too difficult, but it is used by none other than Soulscape. And according to him, it seems that not too many people know where to tame it. Soulscape, thank you so much for the suggestion. We're talking about the Fell Raven. Now, the Fell Raven uh, is, first of all, super badass and this is essentially the pet version of the corrupted dreadwing mount now it's located in hellfire citadel uh and you can also find it flying around uh the hellfire citadel entrance but according to petopia you're better off taming one from inside the raid there's also a named elite named death talon uh and he's going to be located in the in the uh tannin tanan Tanan jungle. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce half the stuff <laughs> in this video, so bear with me. Now, it's worth noting that if you do tame Death Talon, the name Delete, it's going to retain its original name. So the Fell Raven here is actually going to belong to the Cunning Pet family, and they're classified as a bird of prey. And so not only are you getting the Pathfinding and Master's Call ability, increasing your movement speed by 8%, and freeing you from roots and snares, but you're also going to get the ability Talon Rend, uh, which is a slow that is applied periodically. Not exhaust a great pet to take for any hunter out there. So the next pet we're talking about is Scrapclaw. Now this guy, while he may look like a mechanical pet, and while he may spawn on Mechagon, he actually belongs to the crab pet family. What this means is that you're not going to have to get the tome to be able to tame the mechanical pets. Uh, and it also means that he's going to belong to the tenacity spec, bringing you the endurance training and survival of the fittest abilities. Uh, and that's increasing your health by 5% and also giving you an ability to reduce damage uh, taken by 20%. But the crab family also comes with the ability pin, which is going to be the same as the fell raven. Uh, in that it's going to be a 50% movement slow that's going to be applied periodically to your enemy. Now, there's another bottle with this same look. Uh, so technically, this isn't the only place to get him, Scrapclaw, or this, this appearance. However, the other models, they're just called Steel Plated Hardshell, and they both spawn in Mechagon as well. Uh, just in a different area of the map. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put that map up on the screen as well as the map for Scrapclaw's location. Scrapclaw is going to spawn underwater, I believe. The regular steel-plated heart shell uh, will be on land. But again, the really unique thing about this is that it, it looks like a mechanical pet, but in fact it is not. Moving on to number three, and it's going to be Gondria. Now you could probably tell just by looking at her that she's going to be a spirit beast. Spirit beasts are exotic, meaning that they're only going to be able to be tamed and used by the Beastmaster respect, but it also does mean that they come with a wide variety of cool abilities. So again with Tenacity bringing you some good survivability with Endurance Training and Survival of the Fittest. However, Gondria here as a Spirit Beast also comes with the Spirit Mend ability. So Spirit Mend, uh, it's, first of all, it's a heal that can be targeted at yourself, it can be targeted at your pet, it can be targeted at a friendly player. Now I'll go ahead and put a macro up on the screen. Uh, basically what it's going to do is that if you're targeting an enemy, you're going to cast Spirit Mend on yourself, but if you're targeting a friendly, it's going to cast Spirit Mend on the friendly target. Now, Spirit Mend, it is a, not only is it an instant heal, but it's also going to continue to heal you over time. This is invaluable, considering that basically the only heal we have as Hunters is going to be Exhilaration. But not only that, Spirit Beasts also come with Spirit Shock, aka the Tranquilize and Dispel ability, removing one Enrage and one magic effect from an enemy. It's insanely useful in, in both PvP and PvE. I'm more of a PvPer, so when a paladin pops its wings, boom, spirit shock, take those wings down. 
when a mage pops his uh, magic shield, boom, spirit shock, take that shield down. Same thing with shamans in their earth shield or whatever, or whatever guys, and it's one enrage and one magic effect. Uh, spirit beast, an invaluable resource for any beast mastery hunters out there. Now, as far as Gondria specifically, she's gonna be the only pet in the game with this model. She is going to spawn in Zuldrak, Zuldrak, again, forgive me for my uh, for my pronunciations here, uh, but just south of the Storm Peaks and north of Grizzly Hills, I've got the spawn locations up on the map for you. Now, according to WoW Wiki, uh, she's on a 6 to 12 hour spawn timer, but it has been reported that she can take as long as 24 hours to respawn after being tamed or killed. So you might be pitched in a tent for a little while. I recommend if you just happen to be up in Northrend that you, you fly yourself down into Zuldrak and just check out these spawn locations before moving on. Now in keeping with the Spirit Tiger theme, we're going to talk about Anka and Magria. Uh, so I want to thank the Mob Guild uh, for the video tutorial that I used uh, in my research on these pets. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description. I'm actually going to put links for every single source I used down in the description. So if you want to tell me I got something wrong, I can at least prove that I found the information and I'm not just pulling it out of my ass. Uh, <laughs> um, but like I said, if anything's been patched uh, that I don't know about, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know about it. Uh, so Anka and Magria, they are spirit beasts. Um, obviously we got the one white tiger and the one blue tiger. They're gonna be located in Mount Hygel. Their spawn timer, is going to be between 6 and 12 hours and they're going to follow the path on screen so here's the thing though guys there's only going to be one of them up at a time so you're not going to be able to fly down and get lucky and be able to tame both of them in the same run only one of them is going to spawn at a time right and they're going to follow the same path so fortunately you're not going to have to look in two different spots unfortunately you're only going to be able to find one at a time now the thing here the thing here guys is that they both have an ability called Metal Cleaver, which is gonna increase its attack damage based on the target's armor. What this means is that the more armor you have, the more damage it's gonna do, naturally, right? Uh, so believe it or not, you're gonna have a much easier time taming this pet if you completely get naked. You're gonna wanna take off any piece of gear that has any type of armor rating. Now, after you've done that, it's pretty simple. Dismiss your current pet and tame away and you've got yourself a pretty sick spectral spirit tiger the next pet we have uh is called king crush pretty freaking sick lime green tyrannosaurus uh can be found in sholazar basin just west of winter grasp and ice crown nothing special to taming this guy uh other than he's gonna be on a six to eight our spawn timer uh, according to highwardenhuntsman.com and he does not actually share a respawn timer with other rares in the area which are going to be Lokna Hawk and, and Atana. Now this is the only place you're going to be able to find this specific look uh, and he does belong to the Devilsaur pet family which is going to be an exotic family once again uh only beast masters are going to be able to use and tame him uh and he's going to be in the ferocity pet family bringing you the predator's thirst and primal rage abilities that is going to be 10 percent leech and increasing haste by 30 percent for 40 seconds respectively now devil swords also come with the monstrous bite ability and this uh this is great uh for pvp because it causes the mortal wounds effect which basically decreases the effectiveness of any healing received by the target inflicted with it uh mortal wounds go to debuff for any pvp situation uh but as far as as this pet in particular uh regarding pvp in that it is ferocity um this is going to do better in battlegrounds because the primal rage ability uh which is the ability that increases yours and your party's haste by 30 percent for 40 seconds is actually disabled in arenas it's just too strong of a damage buff uh but if you're in battlegrounds uh, i would highly recommend it again you're going to increase the entire team's haste by 30 percent for a significant amount of time and also the mortal wounds debuff uh is just it, you can't you can't go wrong so the next pet we have is the white lion now there are two places to get this pet back in the day this used to be a highly sought after pet for alliance players because the first the first pet with this model is named ichiyaki if i'm pronouncing that right once again i apologize <laughs> um but i'll go ahead and put a map up on the screen for him now he is going to be appearing only in a quest in the barrens at the crossroads all right and this was a horde only quest 
So the only way back in the day that Alliance could tame this guy was to have a Horde player help them out and basically protect them while they did the quest and the Alliance person tamed the pet. Since then, another named Rare going by the name of Cyan Rotom. Now according to WoW Rare Spawn, Cyan Rotom is a level 53 rare white lion that can be found in Northern Winter Spring. He used to be a summon mob uh, for a horde only quest. Uh, in patch 2.3, the quest became available to Alliance as well, but nowadays, Sign Rotom is actually no longer summoned and is, is just simply a rare spawn that can be found occasionally sleeping behind his mate underneath Frost Saber Rock. He won't patrol away from the location, so if he's there, he's there, right? You're not gonna have to search around. He's gonna be underneath Frost Saber Rock. That's where he's gonna be. But given that this pet used to be obviously a lot rarer than it was and given that you can only find it in two spots uh, I went ahead and put it in this video uh, it's, it's a little bit of a throwback but you're still not going to see a lot of people using this pet uh, and again for the Alliance you're only going to be able to tame him in that one spot so both these white lions uh, Ichiyaki and Cyan Rotom are going to belong to the uh, cat species and thus they are part of the ferocity pet family so you will be getting predator's thirst and primal rage as a uh, as a passive and an active ability the pet itself has a couple cool abilities one's going to be prowl so uh it's going to put your pet in stealth which is really nice because the first attack that your pet does out of stealth is going to get a 20 percent damage boost so just a nice opening uh, ability they also have cat like reflexes which basically increases their dodge chance by 30 percent for 20 seconds this is going to apply only to the pet not to yourself just something to note next up is the emerald spirit very very unique model kind of looks like a spear beast is not a spear beast uh this actually belongs to uh the birds of prey family as well just like the old fell raven that we mentioned at the beginning of the video so the only place to get this guy is in the stone talon mountains i'll go ahead and put a map up on the screen of the possible spawn locations now this pet is not an elite it is not a rare it is not any type of spawned pet tame i included this pet in this video simply because of its extremely unique look the fact that you can only get it in one spot and the fact that it looks like a spirit beast but in fact it is not next up we have a pandaria trackable elite rare hexapos hexapos hexapose i don't i don't freaking know honestly <laughs> honestly but the thing with this one guys if you don't already know uh the rares in pandaria are going to be invisible so the only way to find them is by number one going into your settings and turning your ground clutter all the way down uh because what you need to do is you need to look for these little tracks and for hexapos here hexapos whatever i'm gonna call him hexapos for hexapos here it's gonna be called mysterious tracks now once you see one of these mysterious tracks on the ground and i'll go ahead and put a map up on the screen as well because he follows he follows this path here right and he's gonna be invisible so turn your ground clutter down follow the path shown in front of you look on the ground for these mysterious tracks once you see one pay attention to the way the track is facing now back in the day it used to be bugged and you would actually have to follow the tracks in reverse uh but since then it's been patched uh so whatever direction the the track is facing you're going to want to go directly ahead until you find another track pay attention to which direction that track is facing and adjust your course accordingly now eventually you're going to get to a point where there's no more tracks in front of you when you get to that point stop right where you are and peel your eyelids back and watch for another track to pop up as soon as you see a new track pop up you have located him at this point what you do is you toss a flare just in front of the new track that popped up it will reveal the pet in front of you uh i definitely would not recommend attacking him you'll probably one shot him because we outlevel these guys by a significant amount at this point what you're going to want to do after you've thrown the flare get a frost trap under that guy and uh and once he's trapped that's when you're going to want to do your tame just remember that as you're following these tracks dismiss your pet ahead of time because <laughs> the last thing you want to do is finally get the guy finally toss the flare up even get him trapped and then lo and behold you have your current pet up and you have to str frantically dismiss him and uh yeah it's just it's not a good time so 
So Hexapost here is a Water Strider, which is an exotic pet species. So available only to Beast Mastery. So be sure to be in the BM spec if you want to tame this guy up. We're also going to belong to the Cunning Pet family, bringing you the Pathfinding and Master's Call abilities. Uh, and what's cool about this guy is his exotic ability is called Surface Trot, which is basically going to allow you and your pet to walk on water. Pretty sick. Damage will cancel the effect. And they also come with a Soothing Water ability. Now, this is just like the Spear Beast in that this ability removes one enrage and one magic effect as well. Again, invaluable in PvP, very useful in, in certain PvE situations. And just overall, you know, this pet, a, a, along with all other Water Striders, is going to bring you an immense amount of utility, right? You can't underestimate Water Striders. And they're not too frequently used, uh, and especially this guy with his unique look and, and the challenge to taming him. Uh, Hexapose. Definitely, definitely one you should go for uh, if you're looking for a challenge that will pay off. Uh, so that's that for this guy. He's, he's going to be a bit of a chore. So if you capture this guy, you've, you've got yourself a gem. I'll tell you that. So let's take a trip back in time. Now this pet is going to be called Karoma the Wolf Spirit. Based off the vanilla wolf model, this pet... So from what I understand, guys, there are spirit wolves in the wolf family that look just like this, which cannot be tamed. But this model, which is a spirit beast, is tameable. So if I understand correctly, this is the only place to tame this pet. So I'll go ahead and put a map up on the screen for you. Now, according to the rarehunter.blogspot.com, this guy is on a six to 12 hour spawn timer located in the Twilight Highlands. So nothing special to tame in this guy. Uh, he's a spirit beast. So once again, beast mastery spec only. He does come with those extra juicy, delicious abilities, including spirit mend and spirit shock. Now I included him in this video because obviously he's a one of a kind model. He's a rare spawn that you're going to have to camp out for. And mainly because you don't see anybody using this guy. If you're, if you're rocking Karoma in BFA or in Shadowlands, people are going to wonder literally what decade you came out of. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, super cool pet model. Um, and just one of those OG pets. You know what I mean? Just one of those original gangsters. Next, let's talk about Gib the Banana Hoarder also known as the Fez Monkey. So this guy's gonna be located in the Swamp of Sorrows. I will put a map up on the screen. Now, I've scoured the internet to find a solid spawn timer for this guy. The WoW-Petopia forums had a user named Slothy that says that, uh, he says, I got him yesterday on the second attempt. First attempt, well, arcane shot, oops. <laughs> he said, I killed him around 2.50 p.m and I spawn camped him, he respawned around 5.30. Uh, so roughly three hours, roughly three hour spawn timer for Gib the Banana Hoarder, according to this one user in this one case. Uh, so honestly, honestly, who knows? Now Gib here does belong to the monkey species, uh, meaning that he's gonna be in the cunning head family. So obviously you got the pathfinding and master's call abilities. His basic attack is called smack. And uh, Primal Agility, uh, basically it just increases uh, Gibbs' dodge chance by 30% for 20 seconds. Not your dodge chance, unfortunately, but going to give you a little bit more survivability regarding your pet. And this is what I was talking about as far as special features, because when you after you tame this guy, if you click on him, he's actually going to make noise. Uh, so there's pets that that will do tricks um, with the trick ability. Give the banana hoarder here, if you click on him, he's gonna make you, he's gonna make a little sound for you. So he's got the, uh, he's really got the pet monkey thing going for him. Uh, very unique, one of a kind, only place you can find him, as far as I can tell. Now, Wildhead does say that, he's, that he appears in Uldir, but it's not showing a actual spawn location, so. Let me know down in the comments, but it, I'm thinking it's just in the Swamp of Sorrows. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see episode one, it will be right over here to my right, as well as a video about how to craft your hunter build to your specific playstyle using your pets. Highly recommend you check those out. But before you do, make sure you click on this little circle here and subscribe to my channel. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. Guys, I'm Blue Monkey, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.